Welcome to the Buker and Friends podcast, co-starring 10-year NBA center Ryan Hollins. Couple pump fakes, leads it, shot blocked by Ryan Hollins. Hollins sent that into the third row. Six rebounds and eight assists. Oh! Hollins climbs the stairs. Down the floor. Ryan oh! Hollins, he is the high jumper. That's what I want to see. Give me some gunpowder and throw the hammer down. And now, here is your host. Let's send it over to Rick Buker. Rick Buker. Welcome to another episode of Buker and Hollands, subsidiary of Buker and Friends, part of the United Wecast Network. I'm Rick Buker. You can read my stuff on Bleacher Report. You can find me on Twitter at Rick Buker. He is Ryan Hollands also known as The Ryan Hollins, on Twitter. You can see him on ESPN. You can hear him on NBA Radio. And what else? And you can find him here, obviously. Uh, if you want to follow the show on Twitter and Instagram, it's at Buker Friends. Please, if you enjoy the show, or even if you don't, drop us a rating, review us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, screenshot the review and tweet it to us at Buker Friends, and you'll be entered for a chance to win some swag from either Ryan, myself, or Will Blackman, who joins us here on Mondays and Tuesdays. All right. I have a number of things to get to. Uh, first being that, Ryan, we had the Knicks losing on a last-second drive, just like we had the Suns losing on a last-second drive by Pascal Siakam. But in this case, it was a goaltending call, and the Wizards escape with a one-point win playing in London, and you've had that experience. I, I for sportsbetcollective.com, and we'll be making our usual picks against the spread and the over-under for all the games on Friday night, I picked this game, and I picked the Wizards to win. I took the money line for the Wizards to win, and I took the under, because I assumed that playing in London, playing in a, uh, an arena that they weren't familiar with, the travel, everything else, that this would not be an offensive juggernaut. And indeed, that's how it ended up playing out. The line was 227. They scored 201 points collectively, and the Wizards won. So I was 2-0 and after that game. You've had the experience of playing overseas. So tell me just how different it is. What kind of, what, what are the challenges? You really never get settled. You know, you, you try your best to, uh, you know, get acclimated to the time. There's a question of, you know, just the rest, but you can play, you get up to par, but there's just so much adjusting that even doing it in season, these guys are going to feel it maybe for the next week or two. Hmm. And you fall into a situation, Rick, where you go, am I just going to kind of stay on American time or am I going to fully adjust? Right. And you almost want to start that process beforehand, and you're just completely out of rhythm, dude, all the way out. Where? So where did you play, and when did you play there? I went to China twice, back okay. back to back. Ooh, ironically, that's a, yeah, that's went, a I, long trip. Oh yeah, I don't and think how it, long it, were you over? No further, right? We went for training camp. No, it was it training camp? It, preseason, preseason. Okay. So I almost want to say two two weeks at least, or close to two weeks. The thing is, Rick, like with a trip like that, you, you're not doing no like quick turnaround, right. you know. So we went, got our money's worth, played in two different cities, and I went with the Clippers and with the uh, with the Kings. And you played one game with each one, or you play you played more than one game? No, we will play the same team twice. So with the Clippers, we went with Miami. LeBron mm-hmm. was there, and we we played them twice in both cities. And then the second time with the Kings, we went and played against the Nets. Gotcha. So then you play them twice, you know, play Shanghai and Beijing. And these were all preseason games. Yeah, I went for preseason. I, I can't imagine what it's like going during season. Now, obviously, for it's not that bad for Eastern Conference teams. To go to, uh, to as, like London. Yeah, to go to London. It's not, it's not as horrible, mm. uh, but you're going to get taxed. You're yeah. going to get taxed by it. It's basically the Portland to Miami trip. I would say about an eight-hour flight, right? Yeah, I think with less. London, it's from New York, it's like six and a half, maybe seven. I mean, that's not. The, it's really, honestly, not that bad, right? No, it, no. It is, you put it in those terms. Yep. Yeah, that's why I've always thought the possibility of 
like having a division over there, having an NBA division, isn't out of the realm of possibility. It hasn't happened. The, the only question I would have so just, is... Just screw the West Coast teams, huh, Rick? Uh, well, like you would have to go over there and play the division. Like If you, if you were from the West Coast, I don't know how you... But you'd have to go over there and spend two weeks and play everybody, not like jet back and forth. Like go over there and play everybody in that division and then fly back to make it more manageable. I tell you, not a chance, bro. We barely got to Toronto. And it's, it's been presented before. If you're going to do it, Rick... It's going to have to be a substantial, a substantial amount of money for <laughs> it to even be considered. I think a more realistic option uh, would be Mexico. Yeah. But the the only thing is Mexico City would, would be the best available. It's just like Toronto. Excuse me, not, not like Toronto, but I mean just like New York, which in Toronto is kind of like New York. Um, But it's so far away. Mexico City is deep. If there is a, a, a formidable city in Mexico that's a little closer to the border, because Toronto, you're right there. Is, it's mm-hmm. close to Detroit, you know, New York. It's all, you know, relative distance. Yeah. How many players do you think? Do, do you think they'd have trouble if they had a division in, in Europe? Would you have difficulty getting players to play for those teams? I mean, if the money's right, but I mean, you think you're gonna sign a major free agent? I mean, think, bro, you can barely get guys to sign in Toronto. <laughs> they gotta, right? They gotta. Be, if you ask me about London, come on, yeah. Rick. Well, I mean, you'd probably have, but you'd have the Euro players who would be more inclined to stay over there, right? Of course, you'd have Doncic who Doncic would be playing in Barcelona. Okay, so you'd have the Spurs, okay? You'd have the Spurs over there. That that that's what you have. But I mean, think about it. You're going through customs every time. It's the Rick. You can't stand going to Toronto for those same reasons. And after the game, when you're trying to get out, you're going through. Oh, uh, don't paint me. Customs. Don't paint me with that broad brush. Uh, I'm Rick. a world traveler. I'm good with going uh, to Toronto. Yeah, but, I love Toronto. But, yeah, I'm talking about in in an NBA season having to do it, yeah. you know, in the, in the middle of the night, man. It, that's not a that's not a fun deal to do. And you got to think if you live there, you're doing it every, all the time. So Mar DeRozan's just now adjusting, bro, to like <laughs> we don't have to go through customs. Oh, thank you. So yeah. here's the thing, and this has to do with going to London, playing in Europe, playing in in, in time zones, all of that. How much of a creature of habit were you? Because I know that players have like their routine, and if you throw it off just by a little bit, they're not comfortable. Like guys have their routine; it is part of their deal. What was your routine, and how many times was it disrupted, and how many times did you see the result of it being disrupted? Well, morning games I hate because I don't have shoot around. Mm-hmm. I don't mind missing shoot around, but what happens is. If this makes sense, Rick, for the NBA schedule, you cookie cutter out, I would say, three or four types a day for the next, what, nine months in an NBA season. And you'll say, this is what I do on game days. This is what I do on practice days. This is what I do on game days with no shoot around. And you try to emulate that exact structure. I wake up to go to the arena around two o'clock. I eat by 2.30. I'm out the door by 3 or 3.30. Uh, I'm waking up at 8 o'clock. I'm eating by 8.30, and I'm on the road uh, by 9 o'clock for a morning practice. So you you try to hit those exact same marks because you want consistency uh, in what you're doing. So whenever you, you would go to a London or, or you have a 12.30 game, it botches your whole schedule, bro. Right. right. No, I understand that. Was there anything else in terms of – your pregame routine, anything else that, that you had to have and that you had certain – I mean, obviously, guys have different coaches and you're supposed to be on the floor floor warming up so that not everybody's out there at the same time. That That's staggered. But was there anything else that you had in terms of, I don't know, getting having your uniform on, getting tape, whatever it might be? Like you had that, that structure that you're watching the clock and, and you're on a, on a time schedule. One of the things, if you had noticed, so Beasley goes out in the game tonight with his shorts on practice shorts on in the real game and people, Rick dude people don't realize how easy that is to do because the practice shorts look just like your game shorts they're not that big a difference and now the game shorts are even smaller so they're they're darn near the same material and when you get into the locker room you go to the training room you're talking you're doing stuff and then you throw on your real you know your warm-ups over it mm-hmm. and you would never notice so one of the routines I would have I was like paranoid that I would have pulled a Beasley. I would have been Beasley before Beasley, bro. So <laughs> if, if you ever watched me, Rick, I would I would always peek down 
and grab my warm-up shorts and check, are these my real shorts underneath? Are these my real shorts underneath? Like, it's just a running thing because, dude, it's what he did mm-hmm. was very easy, like, yeah. to do, Rick. And I, it makes I you, but it makes you. you look so bad because it doesn't oh. happen oh. all that often, and it just oh. makes you look like you're. You're out to lunch. Well, as a rookie, I, I went to go into the game, and I was so excited. And I have a deal. You know me, Rick. I'm the guy off the bench. I'm the spark. So I, I'm running the game. I'm going to go to rip my my uh, warm-up top off, and I rip off my entire jersey with the top. And I'm, in, I'm sitting there in my tank top. Now, it wasn't as bad as the shorts, but I, – I mean, I was pretty, I was pretty embarrassed because then I had to take the time to unfold my jersey out and then put my jersey on and then go in the game. And they're like, hey, come on, Hollins, come on, man. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you, so you didn't rip the jersey, but you took it off when you were I taking took it off, off with the shirt. Yeah, the you know, shooting you gotta, shirt. You, hey, oh you got to go in that gate like that deal, like Superman, bro. <laughs> you come out the like at the phone booth, <laughs> like Superman on him. Man, I, man, mess around and took everything off. Was there any what, anybody in particular that you played with that had a who, who had the most extravagant routine before before games where it was almost like it was so elaborate it was a pain in the ass? I don't I don't think anything. We're just creatures of habits. Well, I would say, all right, <laughs> Kevin Garnett. I wouldn't describe as elaborate, but there's no games being played. You're not laughing in in the locker room. You're not joking. You're not out of place. There's not, I was, bro, I was nervous. Like, it was like, to me, I, I promise you. So this this is, not, we're, we're creatures of habits. We're such creatures. That, like, you get the towels at this time. Uh, I open the door. You grab the music. You walk out the door. To say, we try to do the same things, bro. All the best things on when you try to do the same thing. We high five and say, tat, 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 tat. this is working. It's not, it's the same thing. You know, whatever it is, the same deal. All right. So Garnett, if you come in there laughing or joking, because he's in game mode. The game's already started three hours ago before <laughs> the tip off, bro. He's going to let you have it. He's going to let you have it. If you go in there laughing or joking or you're not serious, hmm. and I would get a hot pack and I would hand KG a hot pack because they dropped the trainer. Ed. Ed would drop the hot packs in the middle of the floor. I would go hand KG a hot pack because I would take two. He'd take one or two. And it was like a privilege for me to hand him his hot packs. Why? Not that I'm like the ball boy. He don't screw with his routine, bro. So it was like it was like it, this, it was trust. This is real primal. <laughs> this is real primal. <laughs> like, don't <laughs> Rick. You know, like the animals, like don't touch my food. I've got to accept you in the clan. Right. This is accepting <laughs> in the clan. I would hand him the hot packs, but you know we were creatures. That I mean, the way we ran out, the the way you know the team would come in. Everybody would get it. And it's like, don't break up a routine. Yeah. Rick, don't break up a routine. So I remember when I was getting accustomed to routines, I'm always I'm always the early one. Hey, who, who's in what way? Sometimes, you know, DJ would come out. Uh, DeAndre Jordan, he'd sprint down the hallways full speed. And if you're in his way, he'll run you over. You know, there's a lot of different things. And KG was always last coming in. We all join in the huddle. Paul will go. Paul Pierce. Celtics, are you ready? Yeah. Celtics, are we ready? <sighs> you look over KG. KG's over there stretching like he's in his zone. Ticket. Ticket, are you ready? KG will walk over, then we get in the hoodie. Hoo-ha. Celtics, hoo-ha. Then we go out. We run out through the hallways. We'll be in a full sweat, man. And I swear, it's, you know, in Boston, they hadn't changed nothing. It's the same old, dirty, filthy you know, Garden and Danny Ainge, Danny Ainge and, and, and Larry Bird and Larry Legend and all those guys played in, man. And I swear it's like you're you're running out into history, bro, because the crowd knows it. The mm. Boston crowd knows it. And they're at every game, bro. They're there in full. You know, in Miami, they scatter in. You're waiting until mm-hmm, mm-hmm, game time. Mm-hmm. They're full by the time we come out with 15 on the clock and they're ready and it's lit and we would come out it's almost like dude it was darn near like high school this was tradition in the nba and you run out and we'd split you go you know half to the right half to the left we'd come back around we'd meet in the middle we'd high five and then we'd go through our deal and if you screw up the routine bro it was it was choreographed okay kg would let you have it all the way to the point where after the last layup and layup lines, the ball bounces through the net, and he would get the ball at the net, and he'd wait, and he would throw the ball to Rondo, and we did not screw that. And if you screwed that up, 
you got the business. Hmm. Wow. You got the business. <laughs> Through halftime, we're out there in layup lines. You know, some teams don't. Sh- we're full darn layup lines. Let's go. Wow. That's he would good grab stuff. every. Hey, hey, Rick. He would grab everybody's balls. Pause. And, and he'd be like, "We're." I mean, he would lines. grab what? So everybody's basketballs. Oh, okay. All right. Now, pause. Pause means that you can say a statement. It's letting you, Rick. You know what that means. <laughs> but he would grab the basketballs. If you're out there shooting, I'm like we're done, bro. Layup lines time. Figure it out in the layup lines. This wow. is team. Wow. Team over everything. It's good stuff. Um, there is. It's funny. There's guys that, and KG's one of them. Like, are you? I'm surprised that he's doing the TNT thing as much as he is. I just did not expect I, that he would go that my direction. My mouth dropped. My mouth dropped. He was not in a bad way, but like happy. Like he would, he wouldn't give nothing to the media, man. Mm-hmm. It was always f them. They don't believe. <laughs> they don't believe in us. Mm-hmm. F that Buker guy. Mm-hmm. Let them write what they write. Mm-hmm. We come out of at the big playoff game. These MF, they, they with us. They with us or they against us. Mm. When we when we win and they all smile and he'd be the same ones and all oh, he would have you fired up we'd be so fired up bro <laughs> and he's he's such a he's got such a love for, I mean you talk about some hoop talk some basketball oh my gosh mm. shout out to KG Area Twenty One man because when he would get going he's just he's just phenomenal bro and if you watch the show like he is who he is like it's the yeah. it's it's I swear it's the per- like he 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 just talks how he talks and mm-hmm. it's like whoa. I'm like ticket. How are you getting away with this on TV, bro? Like it's it's amazing. He's like that's him. He's he's locked in. I love the guys that he pulls in too. The Rod Stricklands oh and the gosh. Baron Davises. He gets all he gets all the dogs, man. He gets yes, all, he, yes. It's 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 a good deal. All right. Uh, before we get to our picks for SportsBetCollective.com, I do need to ask you. About since we've had this conversation, everybody is saying the Warriors back. The Warriors are back. They've won six in a row. They scored fifty-one points in the first quarter. I'm not buying it. My, I'm, huh? I haven't. I haven't changed. I haven't changed in where I am because here it is. We're in January. Did I expect them to fall apart? Hell no. I didn't expect them to fall apart. But what they're doing right now is not. Is not. Now I will say. I'll give them a little bit of credit in terms of this. The defense that they played against the Nuggets was better than, than the defense that they've been playing. But it's the Nuggets. That team, the Warriors are a bad matchup for the Nuggets. They can't play wow. in a series. That's not happening. But I'll ask you, because you seem to be a kinder, gentler, more benevolent person when it comes <laughs> to the Warriors or just the NBA in general. Are you drinking the Kool-Aid? Are the Warriors back? Are they unbeatable? Are they I, I everything? Like everybody. You about, I like the way you say that drink of the Kool Aid. Come on, Rick. Well, yes, I will say they're back. Obviously, the defense is going to need to improve. But remember, I told you Steph didn't look right to me, and you're like, dude, he's averaging 28 a game. No, that was somebody he's else. Fine. That wasn't me. We didn't have that conversation. Okay. Okay, and to me, it must have been with Stephen A. Since he's backing oh, up man. all your other junk, uh, it, it's not junk, Rick. It's not junk. Dude, I'm a Kyrie rip, Irving it, going if to comes join to, LeBron if it comes with to, the if Lakers. It comes, stop if it comes it. to fruition, I'm going to rub it in your face. You're, you're going to be my first, you're going to be you're going to be my first phone call. T- <laughs> hey, Eric, Eric Pincus had some words for you too, Rick. Like, there's a lot of people. You didn't see that? We had a nice little conversation off what you said. Oh, really? No, I missed mm-hmm. that. Yeah. What did yeah. Pincus say? He just he's all in with me. He's like, Ryan, you're so right. Screw that Euchre guy. <laughs> <laughs> I bring it. Bring it. Get, bring it. Bring the army. Get whoever you need to back it up. But bro, Steph is looking like Steph again. People like people easily forget twenty eight points is not like Steph is a fifty ball or forty ball, night in and that like he's re- like he's unguardable to the point that He's getting guys wide, stinking, open, bro. Offensively, at times this year, it's as good as I've ever seen him. I will give you that. The whole He's been the whole package. I've loved watching. I've loved watching him play. My concern is not with Steph. It's always been with Draymond. And Draymond did the other night have, I don't know, it's like double-digit dimes. There's been a difference there. But I'm going to go back to... 
defensively, and here's the thing, we, you know, we're on the eve of DeMarcus Cousins coming back, and everybody is hyped. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Like, everybody thinks they're, like, how do you add him to the equation? You play different if you're playing with DeMarcus Cousins. And I was, I've always been a proponent of DeMarcus. I, talent-wise, you know, until Joel Embiid got healthy, for me, DeMarcus was the, was the best big man in, in the league, pound for pound. But he, he plays a different style. And the all-star numbers that he got in sack were with the game playing, everything going through him. I don't see that happening with the Warriors. So I hate to be a skeptic, but rather than being all enthused, I'm at best I'm curious to see how they're going to make this work. Well, one thing I'm I'm gonna point out, and I'm gonna really dig into how willing is the market going to be to accept a role. Hmm. And when I say accept a role, he's one of the smartest players I've ever played with. And I say that to say. DeMarcus was good enough to go get his numbers. He was good enough to sacrifice his numbers to play for wins. And I've seen him run and transition up and down the floor with George Carl when the pace needed to be there. And he was almost playing like a point center role, pushing the ball on a break. Because don't forget how Draymond can push it. Boogie pushes the ball on a break. DeMarcus has got a handle. No doubt about and he's, it. He's got that green light. And it could be him running delay action or dribble handoff action, a pick and roll action where he's hitting and rolling to the rim and he almost becomes a point guard in those units. But I say that to say that that's DeMarcus giving me 11 minutes at a time where I got to sub him out because I'm saying, don't pace yourself, bro. Do not pace yourself and go. So I want to see how willing he is to buy in. And one thing I love that that Kerr's doing, he's putting the ball in Durant's hands, and he's telling Steph and Clay to run and play the little floppy action, the little two man game where they're running off screens. And what it does is it keeps Durant engaged. Curry's able to shoot, and he's still great at that. And KD feels like he's involved, and it's not him having to go score the ball because you know he can go he can go make magic happen at sure. any given time. So. They're just finding a groove to me, Rick. And when Steph is Steph, he just he just breaks any other any coverage that you're in, man. Right. He he breaks it. And now I gotta I gotta really give attention to him that I don't want to give. I find it interesting that they are bringing Demarcus back against the Clippers on the road. What do you make of that? <laughs> I I tell you, as a as a man working with the Clippers broadcasting, I say, golly. <laughs> Well, you know he wants to come back against the Pels, right? That, that's that's not a like which he could you have. You know that he could have. He, he could have come played. back last night. I mean, if, if he was, I mean, yeah. But Boogie, do we want? You know, let, let, we don't want. We don't need any emotions. You know, like you knew that. Let, let, let's not set you up for failure. You know what I'm saying? So, I I think it's a good call. You get him on the road where if he makes some mistakes, makes a mistake, it's good. It's bad. It, it's forgiven by the home crowd because you have one time to make a first impression. Right. You have one time to show you're healthy at home or you're running or you bought in and we got any kinks to get out, let's get it out against the Clippers on the road. We don't want to do this at home. Right. Okay. That covers all the topics that we need to cover as far as the league is concerned. Uh, but let's be real. Betting on sports makes the games a lot more fun to watch. And that's this part of the show. We're going to give you all the NBA picks for Friday night. We do that on behalf of SportsBetCollective.com. Commentary you're not going to find anyplace else. The first pick, if you go to SportsBetCollective.com, the first pick is free. And you can also sign up for the newsletter with free weekly picks from top experts giving you a betting advantage on the latest NFL, college football, college hoops, and NHL games. I'm joined there on a weekly basis by a credible cast of sports media experts, professional sports bettors, retired athletes, sports-obsessed entertainers, you name it. So whether you're a seasoned, sharp, or a total sports betting beginner, sportsbetcollective.com provides an affordable way to help you beat the odds, no matter the size of your bet. You can catch all of my picks at sportsbetcollective.com, and we give you all of the the against-the-spread and over-unders for the Friday night games on behalf of sportsbetcollective.com. Last week I went ten and eight, but my boy, Mr. Hollins, thirteen and five. 
easily, I was creeping up on you. I think I was a win or two away from evening, and you just went, and now I'm eating your dust once again. So let's see if I can turn it. Uh, That's because you didn't work. You didn't work me over. That's why. You didn't work me over with the with the with the next day add-ons and the the, the, the any. You are nice when it comes to the Twitter lines. The next day, I think you got a clear that is conscience. That You're is thinking true. better. You know the stress is off. Yeah, it's just just me. I fall I can apart. Focus in on those games. Do a little extra homework. All right, I'm going to be winging it tonight. Trust me. So here we go. We're taping this the night before. That's generally why sometimes we have to put them out on Twitter because the lines aren't always out. But I believe all seven games for tomorrow night. Rather light schedule for a Friday night. All seven games, the lines are out. So here we go. The Brooklyn Nets are visiting the Orlando Magic. And the Orlando Magic are the home underdog. They are getting one point from the Brooklyn Nets. And the over-under is 216. I'm going to make this very simple. I am a believer in the Brooklyn Nets. I will give the one point, the 216. Yeah, they both like to play a small, a slower pace. I'm going to go the under. So I'm going Nets, and I'm going under. I'm actually going to go Brooklyn, and I'm actually going to go over. I don't think the game slows down that much. I'm going over. All right. The Grizzlies are visiting the Boston Celtics, and the Grizzlies are getting 10.5 points, and the over-under is 205. Big question, is there going to be a Celtics hangover from their win over Toronto? And can they double digit? Can they double it up on the Memphis Grizzlies? Where are you going with this one? Mm. I'm going to go Boston, and I'm going to go under. I wow. think the game is, is ugly, but I'm going to go Boston. I'm going to go under. Mem- Memphis is just really struggling right now. They are. Ten and a half is a lot. Here's the thing. If they go, if they play under, then I don't think they get the 10 and a half. I think it's a tight game if they don't reach it. And it is in Boston. I'm going to go Boston. I'm going to give the 10 and a half, and I'm going to go over. The Miami Heat are visiting the Detroit Pistons. The Heat are getting two points for their trouble, and the over-under is 207. I feel as if these teams just played not that long ago. Uh, this is Hassan Whiteside versus Andre Drummond. I am going to go Pistons. I'm going to give the two points. And at 207, defensive struggle. Yeah, I'm going to go under. I'm going to go Miami here. And then this is a defensive struggle. But I'm going to go over. I think just by getting fouled alone they go over 207 that that's pretty low that's really low but you are going under on the 205 for grizzly celtics interesting okay san antonio is visiting the minnesota timberwolves san antonio is getting a point the over under is 225 the spurs have been struggling of late but i think it's your turn Uh, i'm gonna go with the spurs and i'm going over I am with you on both counts. I'm going San Antonio, and I am going over. The Cleveland Cavaliers are visiting the Utah Jazz, and the Cleveland Cavaliers are getting 15, and the over-under is 215. Where are you going on this? I don't know why they have to make it so many darn points. Uh, But I'm going to go with Utah, and... We're actually going to go under. I don't think Cleveland can make up the difference scoring-wise. Yeah, I think Larry Nance is out right now. And if James Harden wasn't doing what he's been doing, people would be paying attention to Donovan Mitchell because he's he has picked it up dramatically in January. November, December, first two and a half months of the season, he was shooting under, I want to say, under 30% from three-point range. He was struggling. He has been – he's averaging close to 30. He's shooting – like 45% from three-point range. He's, he's found his game again. And the one thing I know about Utah is when they win, they win big, which is why they've got the 15 there. God, that is a big number, though. That is a it big is. number. It is. Whew. 
Yeah, the problem is, is Cleveland's just Cleveland's going to have a hard time scoring. So I'll go Jazz, and I will go under. I'll go with you on that. Can't argue. All right. The Golden State Warriors are visiting the Los Angeles Clippers. DeMarcus Cousins is going to be making his debut. The Clippers are getting six and a half. And the over the over under is 242. I think that's a record. I think that's a record for <laughs> that is Gosh. unbelievable. Okay, so I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't go 242. I'm gonna go under on that, but I do believe that the Warriors it look, the Clippers look like a tired bunch right now. I don't see any reason that they're going to flip the script on the Warriors. I'm going to give the six and a half, and I will take the under on 242. Yeah, I'm going to go Warriors, and, and I am going to go under because the, the Clippers are kind of struggling to score right now. I don't know if they get matched, but I, I can see, golly, Golden State like excited and happy that Cousins is back and yep. all. Yeah, but I, I am going to go under. I think the, the Clippers are struggling to score. Yep. And he could be a body that they, they have some well, frustrations with. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Pelicans at Trailblazers. And the Trailblazers are giving away three points. And the over under is 234. Where are you going with this one? Going Trailblazers, and I'm going over. Uh, that pace is going to be crazy from the two of these teams. Yeah. I gotta hate to agree with you, but I have to agree with you. I'm gonna go Portland. Oh, oh you don't hate to agree with me. And I'm gonna go over. You know, for for everything that the Pelicans have done as far as they're twenty one and twenty four, but they've gone six and four in their last ten games. I just I don't I don't like them. And and I feel between Drew Holiday and A D Anthony Davis, they should be better than they are. Like, I like the pieces, Julius Randle, but I just collectively, they just don't, they always seem to be such a seesaw. you have any explanation for why they're such an up and down team? Pelicans? Yeah. They don't play defense. Yeah. They, 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 gotta, they gotta outscore you, bro. <laughs> they don't defend. Which again, when I look at some of the pieces that they have, there's no reason that they shouldn't be a better defensive team. I don't like their pieces defensively. You don't like AD? He's not a. He's 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 not Ooh. like. Ooh, what are you saying here? He's not like a cornerstone defensive guy. You are bucking. You are bucking the system by saying AD can't play D. No, he's not a cornerstone of your defense. You're not hearing me. Like he's not like Gobert's gonna like anchor your defense. Like AD can defensive rebound. He'll block shots. He'll fly around the floor. But like he's not anchoring your defense. You know what I'm saying? He's long, but he's not he's he's not trying to play the five. He's not trying to be a Gobert. He's not a DeAndre Jordan when he's really on his game defensively. He's not going to affect the game like that. You need to compliment him with another five, a, a, a guy who kind of does that. He's he's a he's a forward, you know. He doesn't want to be down there banging around. I agree with you. I agree with you 100%, but the prevent that's not the that is not the public view of Anthony Davis. You talk to the average guy on the street, they're like, oh, he can guard one to five. He can do like da 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 da. Yeah, numbers he, don't lie. He's not a consistent defender for me. But I look, I look. Oh, oh, hold on. Is this Chris Broussard saying the same thing? Kyrie joining LeBron in LA? Oh, my God. Oh, wow, Rick. You're outnumbered. Oh, you know what? I'm just saying. Considering I, I'm, I'm good, I'm, I'm comfortable with where I am. Hey, I'm, I'm just saying, man. Seems to be trendy. I mean, why are you guys losing? Have you guys lost your minds? I don't he know. He left. He's popping up, he, bro. He keeps popping up. He left. Now he makes one phone call to say, hey, LeBron, I know how you feel because I'm in the same boat. And now we're going, oh, he wants to play with LeBron? Seriously? You got to give me more than that. You got to. You have to give me more than that for me to buy that, that there's going to be a reunion here. You're trying to just rule it out, bro. And this ain't a rule out type of thing. I'm just saying, you think that meant nothing? 
Yes. You did Kyrie's yeah, no, no, happy no, no. I don't in this situation it, I don't, right I don't now? think it meant nothing, but I don't think it meant what you are suggesting that it meant, which is like he's reaching out to I'm LeBron and saying, say, that, hey, that, bro, no, I appreciate I'm just saying, you now. We got to see how the Celtics in the season, and we got to see how this relationship with he and these young guys starts to go. <laughs> nothing wrong with getting back with your old thing, man. Dude, you laughed. You laughed. Tell me the last time. You moved out. You said, in fact, you you moved out and you gave her all her stuff back, and you said, "I'm good, I'm out." And now you're gonna say, hey. "Oh, you know what, baby? I didn't, I didn't hey, realize. Ray. I hey, appreciate Ray. you. Not when hey, you Ray. have a ton of other options. No, ain't happening." Hey, she still got that thing though, man. <laughs> she put that thing on him. She, <laughs> she let him know. <laughs> <laughs> said, man, this is some good, man. We don't, we don't make some magic together now, man. It's, good. it's a championship. All right, Kyrie got to work so hard, man. Hey, dude, Kyrie has to work so hard for these wins right oh, now. He's, he's kind of like, up. he kind of like, dang, Bron. Mm, yeah, your turn, my turn looked a little better. It's looking a little better now. Dude, what is what's happening? Oh, you hit clutch shots now too. Mm, dang. <laughs> I would my and you like to pass. I, I love, can just I can I just love spot how, up. I love Woo. how you're talking yourself into this thing. It's oh, beautiful. Man. It's beautiful. All right, that's it for this episode of Buker and Hotlands. This train wreck of an episode, <laughs> subsidiary of Buker and Friends. We're under the umbrella of the United Wecast Network. I'm Rick Buker. You can find me on Twitter at Rick Buker. You can find him at the Ryan Hollands. You can follow the show at Twitter and Instagram at Buker Friends and. Please rate our show wherever you get your podcast. Just hit the stars. However many you want to give us is fine. Uh, tweet it to us if you want, and we'll send you something, or we'll put you in line to win something for free. All right, so it is championship weekend coming up, and on Monday, Will Blackman and I will break it all down. New England, Kansas City, the Rams, the Saints. The four teams that should be there are there. I've got the Saints, and I've got the Chiefs. I'm going with the home teams. Ultimately, we'll see where it goes. In the meantime, thanks for listening.